cell voltage. In this video, we're going to discuss how the chemical reactions in a cell lead to particular cell voltages. We will also look at particular, a particular half cell that is very important to our definition of voltages. This will also give us a chance to look at how we can have an electrode using a gas rather than a solid metal, which we sort of left out of our cell reaction or our cell video. From here, we're going to discuss voltages of specific half reactions and discuss how to combine these to determine voltages of particular cells. And then in the following video, we'll also um, really get into how to use these tables to determine whether particular reactions will happen or not. EMF or electromotive force is a bit of a misnomer as it's really not really so much a force as a voltage. In chemistry, this is more commonly discussed as cell voltage. These are listed by half reaction and we'll discuss how this is measured in a moment. Specifically, it is listed as the reduction value. From the reduction value, you can find the oxidation value because they're equal in magnitude. So they're the same size but they're opposite in sign. And so you just change the sign to find the reduction or the oxidation value. Also note that these are the values at one ATM or one molar. We'll discuss how to deal with changing pressures or concentrations and how that affects cell voltages in later videos. So how does this relate to a cell? Well, the voltage of a cell is the difference in the potential energy between the anode and the cathode. Or in other words, if you add up the two half cell voltages, ensuring that you remember to change the sign of the oxidation half reaction, you'll get your cell voltage. Though at this point, we really need to ask, how are these measured? After all, you can't measure something using only half a cell. And that's true. So rather we set one half cell equal to zero, and then all the other cells are measured in relationship to that cell. In this case, if you look at the table, you can see that the one that has a zero reduction potential is the hydrogen half cell. And we call this the standard hydrogen electrode. Let's look at this in a bit more detail. Here's what our hydrogen half cell looks like. We have a one molar solution of a strong acid so that we have the one molar of H plus and a platinum electrode where H2 gas is then bubbled over the electrode. And then the reaction occurs as it's shown here on the slide. All of the half cell voltages are hooked up to this and that allows us to measure the reduction potential of those half cells in relationship to the standard hydrogen electrode. So what is going on with the electrode here? Well, just bubbling gas through isn't going to give the electrons any place to go. By using a platinum electrode, the electrons are able to move into and out of the solution. Of course, if we use an electrode that will react, then that's going to mess with our cell. Platinum is not very reactive. And so it's used for situations where we need what we call an inert solid, a solid that isn't going to react. It's also very, 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 very expensive. You're not going to be seeing a platinum electrode in, you know, a general chemistry class. So you'll also see things like palladium used here, as well as other cheaper alternatives that work for the particular um, situation that's that's happening that won't react just because of the cell that's going on. There are two different ways that people like to think about solving for cell voltage. Um, this is not one of those situations where you should learn both. You should pick whichever one works for the best for you and how you think about these problems and use that. There is zero reason to bother using both of these. And in fact, if you try to use both of these regularly, you could really wind up confusing yourself. Um, so you might say, well, why do I teach both then? And that's because I found that students do have a pretty strong preference often between the one or the other. And they do find it really easier to think about one or the other. And I don't want to have to pick that for you. I want you to be able to pick that. So pay very, very close attention to the subscripts when I you know, release the, the values on this slide. The subscripts are very important here. 
So the first way I'm going to talk about this is to use only reduction values. Or in other words, to keep the values that come directly from the table. The tables are listed as reduction potentials. In this case, you'll see that you take the cathode reduction and you subtract the reduction value of the anode. So even though the anode is being oxidized, you're filling in the reduction value. And then the fact that you're subtracting it is basically changing signs for you. And so you are subtracting the reduction value. A incredibly equivalent, though slightly different way of thinking about this. And I'd actually go thinking about this rather than doing it, because in reality, it's, it's almost doing it the same way. It's just how you think about it. Is to use the oxidation value for the anode. Now think about why these are equivalent. Here I'm using the reduction value of the cathode, and I'm using the oxidation value of the anode, which means I'm taking the table value and I'm changing sign, and then I'm adding them together. Because I do that change of sign to get the oxidation, it's the same as this negative here. In fact, when you do reduction minus reduction, this negative is basically just changing your sign of your reduction and then adding it together. And so these are equivalent. So if they're the same thing, why might you pick one over the other? And why do people seem to have strong preferences here? Well, the first one doesn't require you to remember to switch the sign from the table values. And that can be powerful. If that's something that you have a hard time remembering to do, then you might want to be able to just fill in directly from the table. You identify the anode, you identify the cathode, and you fill it in. That being said, you do have to remember that it's cathode minus anode. And for some people, myself actually included, I actually have an easier time remembering to switch the sign than I do remembering it, whether it's ca cathode minus anode or accidentally switching that. And that second one doesn't require you to remember the order of the equation because addition is just addition, you add them up. And so you just have to remember to switch the sign on the table value. Um, of course, you have to remember to do that. And that's, that's the downside. So the second one is my preferred way. But I find that students tend to fall about 50-50 on this one. And just because something is my preferred way doesn't mean it's the right way. It's just that's what works best with the way that I think and the way that I remember things. So now moving on, if we get a positive voltage, that means the cell is spontaneous. So that's important, and I'm going to say it one more time. If we get a positive voltage, that means that the cell is spontaneous. Positive voltages result in spontaneous cells. And remember from our previous videos, that's a galvanic cell. If it's a negative value, that means that it's non-spontaneous and a power source is going to need to be applied in order for the reaction to happen. And that's what we call an electrolytic cell. Let's look at an example. In this example, I want you to determine for a given spontaneous cell, I tell you that it's spontaneous. What is the anode and what is the cathode? The key word to help you do this is that it is a spontaneous cell. And so we know that it has to be a positive voltage. And how do we know this? Well, we can look at the reduction potentials from a table and decide which one must be the anode and which one must be the cathode in order to give us this positive voltage. So we need to determine how to combine these two reduction potentials in a way which gives us a positive voltage. The oxidation value is going to either, depending on which way you like to think about it, have a sign change before you add them up, or it's going to be the subtracted value. So by looking at these numbers, we can decide that in order to have a positive value of E, we're going to need to make the zinc the oxidation value. Because when we reverse the sign of the anode, they must add to be positive. So if we reverse the sign of this, 0.44 plus 0.34 is going to be a positive value. If we reverse this sign, if we reverse the sign of the copper, then we wouldn't get a positive value. And so our copper in this situation must be our cathode and our zinc must be our anode. Now, there's another way of looking at this as well if you don't like looking at this in sort of the more mathematical way, which is to say that for a spontaneous reaction, the half reaction with a higher reduction potential 
is going to be reduced. The name really implies it. Reduction potential, aka potential to be reduced, is higher. And so here we see that the copper half reaction is more likely to be reduced because it has a higher reduction potential. Now, let's look at the math on this a bit closer, since doing it quickly and verbally may not have been um, the best for you to understand it. Because we are using the calculation for E voltage of a cell, the way you look at this is going to depend on which type of logic you decide fits best based on our earlier discussion. I'm going to do them both. If you liked using the formula where you only use reduction values and you subtract the anode, then you'd want to think about which values you would need to fill in and where you would need to fill them in in order to get a positive value. And of course, you run the numbers to make sure that you were correct. And you would need to subtract the negative value in order to get you a positive voltage. For the logic where instead you use the reduction value and the oxidation value, meaning you have to switch sign, you'll want to think about which value will switch its sign, when switching its sign is gonna lead you to a positive value of V. In this case, since we have both a positive and a negative value, you would want to switch the sign of your negative value and add it in order to get an overall positive value. And then of course, plug in your numbers to make sure that you are correct.